What are imperfect radicals or imperfect square roots? Well, before we do that, let's make sure you understand what a perfect radical is or a perfect square root. That's where the answer is a nice, perfect integer. You know, one, two, three, four, five, you get the idea. That's a perfect square root. So when we take a look at the uh, square root of 11 or in radical 11 right here, um, I would see that if I put this on a number line, it would fall somewhere between radical 9 and radical 16. See how it just kind of lines up there? And that means that the answer for radical 11 is not perfect. It's not 3 and it's not 4. It's just somewhere in between. And it's a really nasty decimal. And it looks awful and the decimal goes on forever without a pattern. And so um, to be the most accurate, we need to find a way to uh, find out what the uh, what the root is of these imperfect square roots. And I've got a way to do it, but it's kind of an unorthodox way of explaining it. Let's pretend that there is a jail, and it's keeping all these numbers in it against their will. And they're miserable inside, okay? Just like real life jail. They want to get out. So what can we do with the 40? Well, the first thing I tell my students is, is just think of two numbers that you can multiply together to get 40. It does not matter what it is as long as you don't use the number 40 itself. So don't use 1 and 40. That that doesn't help us out. Okay. So use any other two numbers that you can think of that when you multiply together, it gets us 40. Uh, it could be 8 and 5. It could be 2 and 20. It could be 10 and 4. And let's just use 10 and 4. Okay. Now, if you use the other ones, that's fine. Now, ask yourself, are these prime numbers, or can we break them down further? What two numbers can I multiply to get 10? Well, how about 2, and how about 5? And what about this 4 over here? It would be 2 times 2 equals 4. Does this look familiar? It's kind of like, what's the greatest common factor? Yeah, that skill's coming back to play. Well, now... Uh, we're going to take a look at these prime numbers, and I've always circled them, so that way I know it's as small as we can go. And in this jail, there's one way that they can escape. Um, basically, if they get a twin that looks just like them, one can make it to the outside, and the other just disappears. You could say they die, but that sounds kind of morbid, so we'll just say they disappear. Now, um, in this prison, um, the prison prisoner numbers are very distrustful of each other. They don't trust each other unless uh, they're like themselves. So this 2 is scared to death of this 5. And this 5 is scared to death of that 2, and he's scared to death of this 2, and he's scared to death of that 2. But this 2 does trust this 2, and this 2 would trust the other 2s also. Um, so this 2 right here nudges this number 2 and says, hey, let's try to make it outside. 1 didn't make it, so this one totally disappeared. But this 2 actually made it to the outside. Now... What's going on inside the jail? Well, this 2 is too scared to get this 5 to make an attempt to escape, so that 2 is still sitting right inside. And that 5 is definitely not going to ask that 2 to try to escape, so it's sitting inside. And we're just going to put a multiplication symbol right between them. So now let's just clean it up. What's on the outside? Well, the 2 is on the outside. And what's 2 times 5? 10. There's your answer. How would I read it? Radical 40 simplifies down to 2 radical 10. And that means 2 times 10. Um... It'd be like 6.3, uh, and it just goes on and on and on. And so it's not a perfect square root, but you know what? By simplifying this radical down to this version, it's more precise. We're not having to round, and it's awesome. So let's go try it again. What about radical 20? We've got a bunch of numbers stuck inside that want to get out. Um, let's just do 4 times 5. Well, 5 is a prime number, but the 4 would simplify down to 2 and 2. This 2, trust that 2. And so 1 makes it outside. That would be this one. But the other one ceases to exist. It disappears. What's going on inside the jail? Well, that 5 is right there. There are no numbers uh, outside to multiply each other because there's only one number there. And there's no numbers left inside to multiply each other because there's only one number there. So radical 20 simplifies down to 2 radical 5. Let's go through and try this one. Uh, let's do 60 and 2. Now, 2 is a prime number, so we'll circle that. Let me switch to a different color now. Uh, 60. Let's do 6 and 10. And neither one of these is a prime number, so now we've got to break it down further. How about 3 and 2? 
and six suits breaking down to three and two and they're both prime and what about this one five and two all right what makes it to the outside well this three has nobody left to make it outside so the three stays this two right here is going to try to make a jailbreak with this two so one makes it one does not so let's put a two on the outside here this five is left with this two inside and they don't trust each other so there's the five and there's the two and the three was you know didn't have any three so they don't trust each other they're all stuck but because this two had a twin one of them was able to make it outside the other didn't so now what's three times five three times five is 15 and 15 times 2 is 30. So our final answer is 2 radical 30. There we go. Now, um, that's it in a nutshell, but there's two uh, special scenarios that I just need to uh, let you wrap your head around. Um, let's see here. Actually, I need to change that from 40 into a different one. Let's make this into a 10. That'll work. Um, okay, it's not a perfect square root. It's imperfect, so uh, 2 times 5 is 10. Great. Um, problem. This 2 sees no one that is he can trust. This 5 sees no one that he can trust. So they're just sitting in jail together. <laughs> Nobody's able to make it outside. What's 2 times 5? 10. Basically, what this is trying to tell you, sometimes you're going to come into a scenario where you can't... Um, break anybody out of jail. You can't simplify the radical. And so that's fine. Just move on and just say, well, we can't simplify it. And you can just write down the radical itself. Now, other times, uh, you might actually look at a square root and forget, hey, I know this one. The square root of 81 is 9. Well, if you forget, this method actually brings you back to where the answer should be 9. And there's two ways you can do it in case you forget about these perfect square roots. Um, 9 times 9. So this 9 can literally look over at this 9 and go, hey, um, let's try to get it out. And the one 9 makes it and the other one doesn't. What's left inside? Nothing. So there's no need to write that radical sign and there's your answer, 9. But now the other uh, thing is, is you might go, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't, I didn't think we tried to break out until we actually got down to um, prime numbers. Well, okay, let's try that. That's just kind of a, a way that I've used it that works every single time, but it works a little bit um, slow, but it does work. So this three right here is going to try to team up with this three. One makes it, one doesn't. Let me erase this nine here. So one three made it out, one disappeared. Now, uh, this three right here is going to team up with this three right here. One makes it, one doesn't. And so now we've got two threes on the outside with nothing left inside the gel. And there's no need to do that. And what's three times three? Well, it's nine. So even if you forget about the perfect square roots, this method works. Um, you don't have to break it down to composite numbers. What you're trying to do is get the two numbers that actually uh, fit, um, that you know one can make it outside and one doesn't, and uh, that's fine. Um, and I'm going to take actually about another minute, two minutes, um, to show you the other style of this. You know, here's here's a perfect radical right here. Did you know we could write this as radical 10 times radical 10? Because you know 100 breaks down to 10 times 10. And we could also write it down to be like this, radical 10 times radical 10. And um, here's a cool little trick. Radical times radical, if it's the same inside, basically clears it out. Um, just looks confusing sometimes. Um, here's a, another one right here. How about radical 60? Well, we could do 10 times 6. We can do... Uh, 2 times 5 times 2 times 3, right? And then we can rewrite it as each number by themselves, radical 2 times radical 5. See how we're, we're dropping them down to their own radical sign? And then you do this. Okay, do we have any that's similar? 
Yep, radical 2 times radical 2 would be 2 without the radical sign. And then, yeah, wait for it. Hang on. Let's get that radical 3 down here. And then suddenly you'd be like, well, uh, 5 times 3, since they're not the same, let's just put them under the same radical sign. And that would be the same as, oh, guess what? Now we can, since they're underneath it, we could just go ahead and simplify it to radical 15. Or we could just do this. Hey, uh, 10 times 6, 2 and 5, 2 and 3. These are prime. Oh, this 2 can team up with that 2. So that means the 2 on the outside, 5 and 3 are on the inside, which is 5 times 3, 15. So that's my way against some of the other ways. Um, the other way, it's, it's always looking for perfect square roots. Like, honestly, here they would say, hey, what's 4 times 15? And, and because it's 4, they'd go, oh, that's 2, and that'd be radical 2, 15. But because your brain's probably not focused on thinking of it like this yet, um, the jailbreak method might have a little bit better success, a little bit quicker success for you um, with a little less frustration. But um, you know, just understand that there's more than my way out there, and if you like another way, hey, that's fine. As long as it makes sense and you can explain it, and you can get to the right answer every single time.